Hey there everyone, welcome back to the Dan Cave and welcome to another video build. So this video build I am going to build the Tamiya 24 scale Castrol Celica. So that's the ST185. Uh, so the kit I'm building is going to be the, the box scheme, the 93 Monte Carlo winning car from Didier Oriol. So I originally built this kit first time round, getting on for 15, 20 years ago. At the time, I was an ardent brush painter, so when I built it, it was brush painted, probably Humbrol, gloss white, probably, uh, maybe even been given an enamel gloss coat as well. Uh, so all brush painted, and on cars, generally brush painted finishes look shocking and certainly on mine it looked shocking so so this was one of these kits that was always in the back of my mind to go back and revisit at some point so uh yeah so picked one up they are cheap the the tamia sleek is cheap they're good value kit they go together well uh so this video is going to be me building that particular kit once again now slightly gutting i don't have pictures of the original that was been a long long time ago it would have been nice to have them side by side to see whether i've improved regressed whatever but it would have been nice to see them side by side to show that comparison from what i built 20 years ago to what i built a few months ago so how's ever uh i don't but let's have a look at how i got on so this is a one parter entire video build start to finish yeah let's get it done so if you're new here don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like the video as well and please leave a comment if you want to so how's ever let's dive on over to the bench and let's get this kit started roll it on so as is kind of normally the case we're going to start with just checking through the instructions make sure i've got all the parts that need to be body color which is going to be white so that's pretty much everything on the body, the chassis and the tub. Once I've done that, I can start cleaning up any of the seam lines on the body. Now there is a few, this is an old kit. There are a few, but they're easy to clean up with some UMP sanders. Progressing my way through the grits from coarse grits through to finer grits. Now uh, these sanding sponges, once they get a bit worn, they are pretty good for doing the final cleanup. So once I'm happy with that, it's on over to get everything primed. So everything's going to be primed in UMP white. So it's white primer over white plastic. So three medium coats is enough to cover it. As you can see, just checking to make sure I've covered everything, even though it is incredibly difficult to see white paint on white plastic. Now, of course, once I'm done with the white primer, it's going to be on to laying down some TS-26 which has been decanted and sprayed through the airbrush. But at this stage, I'm just getting all the primer finished up. So once the primer and the base coat are finished, it's time to move on to the decals. Now these are Tamiya's own decals. They're not great, but with a little work, a little bit of patience, they do go down. Now, as is often the case, I'm gonna speed up the footage and stick on a little bit of background music. So I'll come back in a few minutes.
So once the decals are done and cured for about 24 hours, it's time to go in and add a panel line wash. So I'm using a neutral gray wash from Megamo and just running that into the panel lines around things like the doors, the bonnet, a uh, fuel filler cap if that's got a nice panel line around it. Just carefully letting it flow in, checking to make sure I've covered all the areas I want. And then that can be set aside to be cured for a few hours. And then I come back with some Sansador odorless mineral spirits just to remove any excess and tidy up any tide marks. It's obviously on white. Uh, it's worth checking, checking, and then checking again just to make sure you've not left any blobs because at this stage, the clear cut's going to go down and completely seal that in. So once that's cured fully, uh, it's on over to the booth again, and this time using ProScale 2K, which requires only two coats, unlike a lot of other 2Ks, and it does lay down absolutely beautifully. So after a quick wipe over an anti-static brush, it's time to start laying down the 2K. So for the first coat, you want a semi-wet coat. I like to make sure I get in around all the kind of wheel arches, all the awkward little spots on the underside, just to make sure there's a complete kind of clear coat goes around the entire body. And then begin laying down that wet coat. So I sprayed about 15 PSI, at least indicated on my compressor gauge. And I'm just looking for a medium wet coat at this stage. Not complete coverage, not a kind of orange peelless finish or anything like that. Just want to look at looking reasonably shiny. And then that can be set aside for about 10 minutes. And once I'm happy with that, I can then come back in and move on to the second and final coat. So as you can see, I'm just making sure I get almost full coverage on that first coat. And then for this second coat, this is when you're laying down a full wet coat. And of course, once you're finished with this wet coat, it's worth leaving us setting the model aside for about a minute and then going back to check for any kind of orange peel, any areas where you think you've not covered and then just add a little bit more 2K onto the surface. And as with most 2Ks, what you see is pretty much how it's going to cure. But just make sure you put it aside in as dust proof a box or enclosure as you can find, just to make sure that that first couple of hours before it becomes dust proof, you don't get any nasty little blobs of dust settling. You will get a few, it's hard to avoid, but you want to minimize it as much as possible. So that's all looking nice. That's all set aside. So it's time to get on and start work on things like the chassis, the interior, the running gear. Start by removing all those parts from the sprue and start the cleanup process of all those parts as well. So of course with the cleanup it's the usual process using the UMP sanders just to clean up any sprue attachment points, any seam lines and using the sponge sander just to knock everything back to a nice even surface ready for primer. Now, it, it is interesting for this kit as I go off to the spray boot to do some priming. So I went for Didier Oriole's car this time. Uh, always a big fan of Didier Oriole. He was a bit of a Monte Carlo specialist. He's had, I think, three or four wins. And certainly in 93, uh, that was his one and only win for Toyota. It was actually his teammate went on to win the Drivers World Championship in 93, which is Ewa Kankinen. Uh, and it was the following year that he won his one and only world title. Also with Toyota. So once all those parts have been primed, uh, it's time to go back to the chassis, do a little bit of brush painting on the underside engine detail, because this is a curbside kit. There is limited detail on it. So I'm just doing a little bit of brush painting just to add a little bit of detail. Now, the wheel arches are supposed to be painted in a Kevlar type color. So I've gone with a suitable sandy yellow and brush painted those details. The interior tub uh, I've masked up and I'm going to spray that 
in X18 semi-gloss black. And that's been thinned with Mr. Hobby Aqueous Thinner. So there's plenty of areas to be sprayed in black. So more of those will be masked a little bit further on and then sprayed in metallic colors as appropriate. So parts for the running gear, so the brakes, they're painted in Alclad steel. And I think I also do the exhaust in steel. Oh, and actually the suspension struts as well. So they are done in steel and then the springs are picked out in Revell semi-gloss black or it's not semi-gloss they call it matte silk they call it in their range but it's basically a semi-gloss black so once again just a little bit of brush detail to add in the detail on the springs so once all those details have been painted up suitably cured it's time to start assembling the running gear so using a little bit of ca glue on the attachment points all those parts pop straight into place as is pretty much always the case with a tamiya kit the fit is absolutely spot on with an older kit there's maybe a little bit of kind of reaming of some of the the, the attachment holes needs to be done in case there's a little bit of a tight fit but that's easy enough to do just a quick dry fit check that everything slots in if not a little bit of adjustment with a scalpel blade or a drill bit and that will make everything fit together absolutely fine and as you can see that underside is coming together rather nicely so again it's worth making sure that things like alignment are correct at this stage and we'll make sure the toe on the wheels looks pretty much correct so for the interior, the seats were primed in UMP black, so they're going to be left in black. But I'm just outlining the rear of the seats using some masking tape so that I can cut out a template, which I'm going to use to cut out some Kevlar decal, which is going to cover the back of the seats. So as you can see, I've cut out a shape, usual decal process into warm water, uh, I think this Kevlar decal comes from Model Factory Hero, responds very well to UMP decal solutions. Uh, certainly the UMP strong and maybe a little bit of extra strong as well towards the end. That and a little bit of heat and they'll settle down absolutely fine. So once all the interior details have been painted up, you can also get on and start assembling the interior as well. So it's pretty much a standard interior straight from the box. I've used the kit decals for the seat belts. And the seats just pop in place just like so. And once all that's done, the roll cage and the dash can be added. So as is usual with Tamiya kits, uh, there's some tire decals. So there are the reverse decals. So you just need to split them apart from the backing paper, put them in place, and I use a cotton bud with a little bit of water on it just to dab them in place, let it soak through, and then carefully peel off that backing film. And that should result in a perfectly placed tire decal. So repeat that for all five of the wheels, because the spare is included. Once they're dried, I'm just going to brush over some... A uh, dull coat, enamel, matte varnish. So now that the body has been cured for a suitable amount of time, that's been flattened back using micro mesh, and then it's on to the UMP compound and polish just to restore any shine that's been taken away from the flatting process. So as the 2K went down absolutely fine, it's a fairly straightforward process to clean all that up. And just wash everything down once that's done and you should have a nice clean body and i can have a cup of coffee so once that is all done it's time to start masking the window seals with no rubbers any of the semi-gloss parts that inevitably appear on the exterior of cars so just using combination of azu tapes uh tamiya thin one two and three mil tape 
all the way up to the 20 mil tape and then I've got some wider kip tape as well just to block everything out then it's back over to the spray booth to lay down some x18 semi-gloss black so again just build that up slowly you don't want to flood it because that'll risk the paint running under the mask and once you've given that a couple of coats it's time to head back over and remove all that masking tape now the windscreen sorry the, the the window part which includes the windscreen and side windows was done as well so that mask was created by me because tammy don't include a mask set with this kit which is a little bit of annoying but not a huge problem but as you can see all that masking tape has been removed and that means we can now glue in the clear parts so a little bit of ca glue in along the roof line let that cure and then the body can be attached to the interior tub and chassis so with that done it's time to start adding all the external parts so things like the roof vent the pop-up light covers pretty much all of those are adhered in place using some pva glue as are the headlight covers so we use the black sharpie to run around the outside edge of those just to simulate the the rubber seals that you get on headlight units the wheels can be popped on and poly caps are in place inside the hubs from an earlier step so those wheels should just slide in place the alignment is perfect the stance is perfect this tamiya kit is still a good one and then there's a final little step of adding some external decals so there's things like uh, rally plates on windows i think there's an advertising sun strip as well for toyota things like the number plate can be added rear cluster needs to be added at this stage as well and with that done i can then add the very final touch which is a piece of metal wire for the aerial on the roof And with that done it's time to have a look at the final build so overall pretty happy with how this came out i think my mojo was a little bit at a low when i was building it so I probably didn't enjoy it as much as i thought i would but I th overall i'm happy with the end result uh, everything went together well even the tamiya decals performed almost flawlessly so let's head back to me for some final thoughts so there you go as you can see it's done was it one of my best builds probably not i think with all the kind of disruptions through travel butter stuff going on i didn't get a clean run at this kit uh perhaps a bit of a dip in kind of mojo and form when i was building it but i still think it came out all right sits happily on the shelf yeah it's it's right up there somewhere so it sits on the shelf uh reasonably pleased with it uh clear coat went down spot on from pro scale ts26 went down fine as a white plenty of little detail bits in the kit I'd, I'd like to improve upon i do have at least two other schemes for for this particular model uh interesting thought is that i might try the hasegawa kit as well because they do the, the one six the 185 as well uh so it might be interesting to try but this is such a bar bargain kit anyway you know it's 20 odd pounds in the uk to pick one of these up maybe less from the right place uh so yeah so you know i won't say it was an enjoyable build because it was in that little bit of a dip but well worth doing and a good quick build and uh reasonably happy with the result shall we say so that's it for this video build let's not hang about so thank you all for watching if you're new here don't forget to subscribe 
you liked the video don't forget to give it the like thumbs up thing on youtube and feel free to leave a comment so thank you all for watching and i'll see you all very very soon in another video no doubt from the dan cave so thank you and bye bye